My、uh, dad took this picture back in 1965 of、uh, me and my mom when I was six years old during my family's three and a half year round the world sailing trip. And more than 30 years later, I took this picture of my wife and son during my third time around the world. And、uh, I'll tell you, after all those years at sea and hundreds of hours spent underwater, the ocean really is in, in trouble. And I got this sense from subtle things like it's not just less fish, but they actually behave differently when you see them underwater. And the trade winds don't blow like they used to in places where.、Um, The ocean used to bless us with big, gentle swells. It's now confused and feels anxious. And out there, in the middle, a thousand miles from land, it even smells different than it used to. And of course, science is telling us the same thing: acidification of the ocean is putting the entire marine ecosystem at risk. Yet more than half the oxygen、uh, on the planet comes from phytoplankton in the sea. Fish provide the greatest percentage of protein、uh, to humans. Yet 85% of fisheries are at or beyond their biological limits, and today, less than 3% of the ocean is protected. The vast majority of us live near the coasts, and three quarters of our megacities are on the coast themselves. Yet trillions of dollars of infrastructure are at risk if the sea level rises just one meter. As someone who loves the ocean, I'm actually worried about one thing, the most. Even though most of us may live near the sea. Precious few of us actually share a deep connection with it, and without that connection, change just isn't going to happen. So, how do we change that? How do we make that connection? I'll tell you. The ocean needs more storytellers. Storytellers like Jacques Cousteau and Steve Zissou, <laughs> and the great sailor and author Bernard Montessier, and of course Sylvia Earle. But we need thousands of people like that to spread the message further, to connect with more people, and that's why, for the past year at Autodesk, we've been repurposing some of our most advanced technology to help everyone tell the、uh, ocean stories. This is Sly Lee. He's the founder of the Hydrus. He's an ocean scientist who's made it his mission to communicate about the ocean and make as many of you the ocean storytellers as he can, and he's doing that with a technology called reality capture. That、uh, he's using to share what he sees underwater、um, with as many people as possible, and trying to make them the ocean's storytellers. Let me show you how it works. Basically, you take a series of photographs of the object that you want to capture with an ordinary camera, even a、uh, smartphone will work. And then, with a piece of technology called Autodesk Memento, those photos are uploaded to the cloud, and then hundreds of CPUs work on figuring out where each of those photos was taken in space. They correct for lens distortions, differences in cameras,、uh, to produce this—a very high-resolution 3D model from simple photographs. In fact, these models are so good that we can see individual coral polyps in the 3D data. Now, certainly, this is a lot more compelling than a still 2D photo. But what's really cool is because it's 3D data, it's something that a computer understands too. It's computable data. And、um, that means a couple of different things. For one, I can take the file、uh, from the table coral that you saw a minute ago, and send it directly from Memento to a 3D printer, and get something like this. Now imagine the power of putting this in the hands of schoolchildren who have never been to the sea. And wouldn't it be cool if one of those kids became an ocean scientist or a government leader working for change?、Uh, but first, that kid has to fall in love. With the ocean, and maybe this experience of holding this in their hand could be the spark to set that off. There's something else that's cool about having this 3D data. Scientists used to study coral like this, with a tape measure. No, I'm serious. It's like、um, Dr. Seuss, like one coral, two coral, three coral, <laughs> right?、Um, now with reality capture, because this is computable data, the computer can actually tell me yes, there was a coral there, but it can tell me exactly where it was. It can tell me its precise dimensions down to a couple hundred microns. If I go back six months later and photograph that same coral again, the computer can actually tell me is it doing well, or is that coral in trouble? And if we capture repeatedly, we can actually observe ecological change take place over time. Now, because these tools are accessible to anybody with a camera and an internet connection, suddenly you have a hundred times or a thousand times the number of minds thinking about this stuff, going out collecting data and sharing it. Okay, so what? Well, all of those people 
are now the ocean's storytellers. Okay, there's another problem. People don't care. This is my friend Bill, and he doesn't give a shit about the ocean. <laughs> not, 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 not because he's a bad guy. He's actually a really nice guy, but he's not thinking about this stuff. He's not aware and he's not engaged. Why? Because it's hard to relate. In fact, for many, the ocean is just this vast, featureless plain. But people do care about other people, so why not engage with people, connect them to the ocean through stories of our rich seafaring history? This is Dr. Brendan Foley of the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, and he is currently leading the research on the wreck of the Antikythera. It's arguably the most significant underwater archaeological site of our time. It is a 2,000-year-old Roman ship that's loaded with ancient Greek treasures. And it's not just any 2,000-year-old ship. It's like an 18-wheeler backed up to a luxury mall, and they filled it up with really fancy stuff, and then it got lost at sea. <laughs> it's actually where the Antikythera mechanism was found. This is an ancient computer that we think、uh, was designed by Archimedes. And、uh, last time that Brendan and his team were diving on the wreck, they found this beautiful bronze ornament from a luxurious bed, kind of like a bedpost. And As they were clearing the sand away from this thing, they knew that they'd found something very special. So they did a reality capture of it to get a record of it in situ. And then, as the diver is coming up through the water column towards the surface, very carefully cradling this 2,000-year-old object, it disintegrates. It turns to dust. It's gone. It's lost forever. Except it's not lost because they captured reality. I can stand here holding it in my hand today, in bronze. From a 3D print of that data, and I tell you, it feels pretty cool here, standing here holding this. It's intense. Remember earlier, I said that it's hard to relate, and that actually applies to me too. I'll share a personal story with you. I've been thinking about sea level rise for quite some time, and certainly from an intellectual standpoint, I understand what sea level rise is. But from an emotional standpoint, I've had a really hard time understanding what it means. This is the road that we take to drive the kids to school every day, and it happens to be in an area that's particularly susceptible to sea level rise. So we chose it for an experiment. We gathered the best scientific data available. We ran、uh, simulations with some advanced software and did some interactive visualization to create this. This is what that exact spot will look like when the sea level rises three feet. And I'll tell you, the first time I saw this was the first time that I actually understood what sea level rise meant for me. When I saw it, I literally went, "Oh shit!" And that's exactly the kind of emotional connection I'm talking about making. Now, I'm super excited about this technology,、um, these tools, and technology in general to help solve some of the ocean's problems. But we still need the people that are going to take those tools into their hands and create the stories, create the engaging experiences and narratives. The problem is we're still desperately short of storytellers. I have some bad news for you. Two of these guys are dead. One of them doesn't actually exist, and Sylvia, bless her, has done more than her fair share, and she could really use a hand. <laughs> right. Right. But the good news is, it's actually not too late. If we get our shit together, we might actually、uh, change things, and things could happen very quickly within a generation for for some of the issues that the ocean faces. So here's my challenge to you. Go out and make a connection with the ocean yourself. Yes, of course, but use your voice, your creativity, your influence, maybe some of these tools, to engage with your kids, your schools, your community, your industry, maybe a whole country, and connect them to the ocean. Tell them a story, and help them fall in love. Because in the end, I think we might actually do what it's going to take to save something that we care so deeply about. Thank you.